Hello and welcome to this video on integration of a two-form over a parameterized two-dimensional surface. Okay, so in differential geometry, integrating a two-form over a parameterized two-dimensional surface generalizes classical notions of surface integration. Um, this approach is both intrinsic, that is coordinate-free, and foundational to understanding surface integrals in modern mathematics and physics. All right, so perhaps at the moment, yeah, I might turn that off. All right, so the setup. So let N be contained in R3. So here we are in R3 and we have this surface here. Be a two smooth two-dimensional surface and let F be a parameterization of N such that F is a map from M contained in R2, M contained in R2, to N contained in R3. So we have two variables in R2, U and V, and we have three variables in R3, which is X, Y, Z. Now, where U, uh, now F of UV equals X of UV, Y of UV, Z of UV equals X, Y, Z. Where UV are the coordinates on the parameter domain, M contained in R2. And F is a map from M to N, taking points in M and mapping them to points in N. All right. Now, the idea in this video is we want to perform some sort of integration over this surface here, some sort of flux or something happening. And um, we can do that using two forms. And what we can do to make our life easier is to pull them back from this surface here to this space here from the three dimensional R3 here from three dimensions back to two dimensions and make the task much easier for us using the pullback. So let's have a look at that. All right, so differential two forms. So two form omega and R3 is expressed in terms of the standard basis for differential forms as it can have this form. It doesn't have to have all of it, but it can have this form. So omega is k of x, y, z, dx, wedge, dy, plus g of y, z, dy, wedge, dz, and so on here. Where k, g, and h are smooth functions on R3. Smooth as in continuous and no sudden changes in um, uh, the value of the derivative at any point. Um, now the wedge product, the wedge shown here, ensures that omega is an anti-symmetric two-form suitable for integration over two-dimensional surfaces. And a pullback of a two form to integrate omega over the surface n, we want to pull it back from m to n, we use the parameterization f to pull back omega to the parameter domain m. I'll go back to that diagram shortly. So the pullback f star of omega, that's the pullback of omega under the map f, is a two form on m defined by f star of omega is omega f of the parameterized surface UV, the surface parameterized in terms of the variables UV. All right, so again, N, right, we have this surface contained in R3. All right, we have the surface in R2, UV here, this in M. Okay, we have a map that takes points in M, such as point P, to N, such as point F of P. Okay, and at each point P, we have the cotangent space here, and at the point F of P, we have the cotangent space to, so the cotangent space to N at the point F of P, cotangent, the T asterisk indicating cotangent or dual space to the manifold N at the point F of P, right? And the cotangent space to M at the point P, hence T asterisk, I'm not showing the tangent spaces here because it's not relevant for me to talk about vectors at the moment uh, while dealing with this. We, we're just talking about the inter integration of differential forms and we're using the pullback to pull them from one manifold to another. So the pullback of omega under the map F is indicated F upper asterisk omega. And we take a, in this case here, a two form here in this cotangent space and we pull it back to a two form over here. Okay. Why that helps in integration, you'll see shortly. So we have three dimensions here, two dimensions here. All right, so computing the pullback for the parameterized surface F of UV 
is x of uv, y of uv, z of uv. Compute the pullback f asterisk of omega in steps. So step one, we want to compute dx, dy, dz. Well, dx, using the chain rule here, is partial x on partial u, du, plus partial x on partial v, dv. And dy will be likewise, shown here, and dz, shown here. All right. Next step, we want to compute dx wedge dy and dy wedge dz and dz wedge dx. So let's just look at, to start off, dx wedge dy. Well, that's this object here wedged with this object here. So we have partial x partial u times partial y partial u du wedge du. Well, we know that's going to go to zero. Any differential wedge with itself is zero. That drops out. Then we'll have the, uh, partial x partial u du wedge with partial y partial u uh, sorry partial x partial u du wedged with partial y partial v dv that's this one here that's fine it's not going to go to zero and then the other one here is this one wedged with this one which is the reverse order we'll deal with that in a minute and then finally this one partial x partial v dv wedged with partial y partial v dv, well, dv wedge dv again is zero. So first and fourth terms are zero, and we're left with these two here. Now here, du wedge dv, well, dv wedge du is the reverse of that, the negative of that. So we can swap that order and put a minus sign here, which is the case. When we do that, if we have a look here, then we can take out the common factor, du wedge dv, and put that down there. And notice, as, as shown in the previous videos, if you go back to the videos, the beginning of this play, playlist, I go through and explain all this and show you that this is the determinant of a matrix with these terms in it, these elements in it here. So the determinant of this matrix gives us um, this object minus that object multiplied by du wedge dv. Okay, now the determinant of all this is the Jacobian determinant, or the determinant of the Jacobian. All right. And so all of this, dx wedge dy, is simply the determinant of the Jacobian of the transformation times du wedge dv. All right, now by the same pattern, you don't need to do the calculations, but the same result here, dy wedge dz will give you this, and dz wedge dx will give you this. All right. Now, next step, we express omega in terms of the parameterization f of uv by substituting x equals x of uv, y of y uv, z equals z of uv. Next step, the surface integral now, the thing we wanted to integrate along. Now the integral of omega over n is defined as the integral of omega over n is equal to the integral over m of the pullback of omega under the map f, so f asterisk omega. Okay, so the pullback in coordinates, so if omega is all this again, just reminding us, remember all this, then f Asterisk omega is computed as, um, so I just vaguely keep that in mind because we're going to substitute all now for uv. The whole next couple of slides will be about substituting in here, getting rid of the x, y, and z, and expressing in terms of u and v. And dx wedge dy, dy wedge dz, we can see up here, dz wedge dx, we can see up here, and dx wedge dy we did on the previous slide. All right, so what that gives us then is the pullback of omega under f, f up asterisk omega, is all of that. Here's a shorter, more convenient way of expressing this, um, but I'll get to that in later parts of the video or perhaps even in the next video. But written out all like this looks quite large, doesn't it? Although there is a more compact way of writing the determinant of the Jacobian. All right, now the explicit integral, the surface integral, now we want to integrate some surface integral over n, over the surface given on the diagram earlier. We'll come back to it again shortly. So the integral of omega over n is the integral over m of all of this, du dv, with respect to u and v. All right, so in our example now, let's have an example here where we want to evaluate the integral of omega over n, where omega is z dx wedge dy. So the next couple of slides will be dedicated to that. So again, here's our surface. All right. I'll go through how that's parameterized shortly, just on the next slide. But in, we're in R3 here. This is our surface n, upper hemisphere. 
and we have a map F from M to N that takes points on M and maps them to N. One such point is P and F of P. At F of P, the cotangent or dual space containing the um, two relevant two form in this example is here. We're going to pull that back to here, to the cotangent space to the point P on, on M here. Remember P is totally arbitrary, so is, and so is P could be any point here, and so F of P is any point over here. And each point has a unique dual space or cotangent space. And the collection of all those cotangent spaces on M or collection of all those cotangent spaces on N is the tangent bundle T upper asterisk M. All right. Okay, so the cotangent space to M at the point P is this. The cotangent space to N at the point F of P is this. So here we go. So let n be the upper hemisphere of the unit sphere. x squared plus y squared plus z squared is 1, shown on the previous slide. Parameterized by f of u v is cos u sine v, sine u sine v cos v, as you'd expect. Um, and you often think of theta and phi, but I just chose to use u and v just to be consistent with the discussion earlier. So f of u v is this, which is x, y, z. U uh, belongs to the closed interval 0 to 2 pi, or I should say semi-closed, uh, um, left-hand interval open, 0, 2 pi closed interval there. Anyway, V is an element of 0 to pi on 2, that's a closed interval there. And omega will be Z dx wedge dy, and the pullback F asterisk omega is, well, step 1, compute dx and dy. Well, we know x is cos u sine v from up here. x is cos u sine v. dx will be partial x partial u du plus partial x partial v du v. And when you do that, uh, the partial derivative of this with respect to u becomes minus sine u sine v du. And then the partial derivative of x with respect to v becomes cos u cos v dv. Um, dy becomes the partial of y on the partial u du plus the partial y on partial v dv and of course y is sine u sine v and the partial derivative of y that's this with respect to u sine u becomes cos u times sine v du and then the partial derivative of y with respect to v becomes sine u cos v sine u cos v dv okay that's the one there don't forget of course z is cos v, and we'll call on that at the end here, another couple of steps down. All right, next step. Um, next, we compute dx wedge dy. Unfortunately for us, there's only dx wedge dy. There's no dx wedge dz or dz wedge dy or anything like that. So a simpler problem. Um, and so dx wedge dy is all of that, wedged with all of that. Okay, uh, this bit wedged with this bit, well, du wedge du, well, it's going to give us zero, so that's handy. Um, then we're going to have this wedged with this, so we will have minus sine u times that sine u is minus sine u squared, uh, sine v here, sine v, cos v here, cos v here, du wedge dv. Uh, next one will be this wedged with this, so we have uh, cos u times cos u is cos u squared, cos v times sine v, cos v sine v dv wedge du and that's the reverse order to this one here we'll deal with that shortly last one here it gives us dv wedge dv which is not going to do it that'll be zero because any differential wedge of itself is zero hence du wedge du is zero okay next line down we can write this out again in the exact same form and then here we're going to reverse the order dv wedge du we're going to go for du wedge dv so we'll put a minus sign in front here so we'll now have a minus here, a minus here. We can factorise that out, take a common factor of minus 1. And we can also take out this common factor of sine v, cos v, du, wedge dv, cos v, sine v, um, du, wedge dv. Pull it out there, and we're left with sine squared u plus cos squared u in there, which will just be 1. So we'll have minus sine v, cos v, du, wedge dv. And then finally, we just call on the last bit. Remember, z was cos v. So the Pullback under f of omega is the pullback under f of z dx wedge dy. Well, dx wedge dy is this. And then z dx wedge dy will just be a cos v multiplied there. So 
this cos V will become cos V squared here. So we have minus sine V cos squared V du wedge dV. Great. That's the pullback. And now to, we've pulled that back, Z dx dy from N, we've pulled it back to M, where it's going to be easier to integrate. The surface integral of omega over the upper hemisphere of the unit sphere becomes the integral over n of z dx dy is equal to the integral over m of minus sine v cos v du dv, where uh, u is between 0 and 2 pi and v is between 0 and pi on 2. All right, so we have that there. Well, there's no u variable in here. And with the integral for, over, for u is between 0 and 2 pi. So that just goes in here because that would just give us a constant. Then the integral is 0 to pi on 2 of this bit here, the, the v's together. All right, well, <clears throat> the integral du over the definite integral, uh, integral 0 to 2 pi of du is just 2 pi, because it's 2 pi minus 0 is 2 pi, times then the integral of this. Well, this turns out to be 1 third cos v cubed. Okay, cos v cubed times 1 third. If you differentiate that, you'll have um, 3 on 3 times sine v cos squared v. All right. We're evaluating that between 0 and pi and 2. And when we do that, it'll give us negative 1. And so we will, uh, negative 1 third, sorry. And so we'll have minus 2 pi on 3. So the final result is the integral of omega over n, right, is equal to the integral of this over m, which is just minus 2 pi on 3. It's a nice, convenient, simplified way of carrying out the integral by using differential forms and the pullback made life easier for us than trying to integrate over that surface n uh, in x, y, and z. So it's the power of differential forms and the pullback. So in summary, to, for, we one, parameterize the surface n as f of uv, compute the pullback, f asterisk omega in local coordinates, integrate over the parameter domain m, to evaluate the surface integrals. Remember, f was a map from m to n. And this approach generalized surface integrals to any parameterized two-dimensional surface, uh, surface and provides a rigorous foundation for integration and differential geometry. So that's it there. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you found this video, if you enjoyed it, if you liked it, if you found it useful, please push the like button. And also subscribe to the channel if you will. I'd greatly appreciate that if you would. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Please take care. Enjoy yourselves. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time around. Okay. Bye for now.